Hello everyone, so welcome to the third lecture of this module. So, in this lecture we will learn a method for computing eigenvalues and here the method will be a numerical methods because so far you learn how to calculate eigenvalues from as a root of characteristic polynomial. So, here what we will do? We will apply some sort of similarity transformations on the given matrix such that after a sequence of similarity transformations, the matrix convert into a diagonal matrix and from the diagonal matrix we can see the eigenvalues directly as the diagonal elements. Furthermore, the sequence will also contain the information about the eigenvectors of the matrix. So, this method is called Jacobi method and this method gives a guarantee for finding the eigenvalues of real symmetric matrices as well as eigenvectors for the real symmetric matrix. So, as I told you it is based on the sequence of similarity transformations and those transformations will be based on the rotation matrices or given rotations. We will apply the rotation matrices in terms of similarity transformations to the given matrix in such a way that all the op diagonal elements become 0 after a series of transformations. Here op diagonal elements become 0 means there should not be uh, not be any change in the eigenvalue of the matrix and that is why I am telling you the similarity transformations because the two similar matrices will be having the same spectrum. So, first of all here we should know or we should have the idea about a rotation matrix. So, what we mean by a rotation matrix? So, a 2 by 2 rotation matrix in a plane is given by by this particular matrix. So, it is an orthogonal matrix you can check it is having determinate as 1 a transpose will be equal to a inverse and so on. This is about the rotation in a plane by an angle theta. If I talk about the rotation in the space then first of all we should decide where I want to make the rotation whether the rotation about x axis or y axis or z axis. The second thing by which angle. So, if I want to make a rotation about x axis by an angle phi 1 then the rotation matrix will be 1 0 0 0 cos phi sin phi 0 minus sin phi cos phi. If I want to make the rotation about y axis by an angle phi 2. So, it will become So, the rotation matrix will be this one and if I want to make it about z axis by an angle. So, I want to make it about z axis by an angle 3 uh, phi 3 then the rotation matrix will become the third column will become 0 0 1 third O will become 0 0 1 and here rotation will be cos phi sin phi 3 cos phi 3 minus sin phi 3 and cos phi 3. 
So, these are some examples of rotation matrix in 2D and 3D space, 2D plane and 3D space. But suppose a n by n matrix is given to us, then a n by n rotation matrix let us define it denote it by j p q theta. So, here we want to put the cos and sin terms in p th rows and q th row, p th column and q th column and this will be of the form this one. So, except these two rows rest of row will be like 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 like that. In these two rows we will be having the terms of cos theta and sin theta. Like here in pth row I am having 0 0 0 then at the diagonal of pth row and pth column it will be cos theta. At the intersection of pth row with qth column it will be sin theta. Similarly, at the intersection of qth row with pth column will be minus sin theta and the intersection of qth row with qth column will be having term cos theta. So, let us denote this cos theta by c and sin theta by s. Then the matrix J p q theta is known as Jacobi rotation matrix or given rotation matrix. The matrix J p q theta is applied to symmetric matrix A as a similarity transformation and once we apply it to A this will rotate row and columns p and q of a through an angle theta. So, that p q and q p entries become 0. So, these are two of diagonal entries p q and q p and these two entries will become 0. And I told you this method, uh, method is applicable only for symmetric matrices. So, hence p q will be q p. So, let us denote this uh, the similarity transformation like this. We are having pre multiplication of j transpose and a post multiplication of j with matrix A. And I am getting my next matrix A dash. So, A dash is j transpose A into j, where j is a rotation matrix with rho p and q and by an angle theta. So, let op a and op a dash be the square root of sum of squares of all of diagonal elements of a and a dash respectively. Then op a square will be Frobenius norm op a minus uh, square of the Frobenius norm minus i equals to 1 to n a i i square. So, what we are doing? We are taking square of all the elements and we are subtracting the diagonal elements. Since the Frobenius norm is invariant under orthogonal transformations and only p and q columns are reformed in matrix A dash. So, we can have the sum of squares of of diagonal elements of matrix A dash equals to square of the Frobenius norm of A dash minus square of the diagonal elements of A dash. This equals to square of the Frobenius norm of A minus i not equals to p q a dash i i square because there will be change only in p, p and q elements p th row p q and q p elements minus a dash p p square plus a dash q q square this will become this particular term and finally, it comes out that the square sum of the squares of op diagonal elements of a dash will be less than sum of square of op diagonal elements of A. It means the square elements are the elements from op diagonal are eliminating going towards 0 and this is the basic motivation for the Jacobi method. So, here it shows that the size of op diagonal part decreases by applying Jacobi transformation the post multiplication of a by j 1 yield change in columns p and q in the same way the pre multiplication of a by j 1 transpose bring changes in rows p and q. Hence the transformation a dash equals to j 1 transpose a j 1 alters only rows p and q and columns p and q of a and there is no change in rest of the rows and columns. 
if we see this transformation in a n by n setup, so what will be the relation between matrix A and A dash? So, the elements A dash J k of the matrix A dash are given by the formula. So, when J not equals to P and J not equals to Q, A dash J P will be C times A J P. Please note that here C is cos theta minus S A J Q. Similarly, A dash J Q is given by S A J P plus C A J Q when J not equals to P and J not equals to Q. The diagonal entry in the pth row is given by A dash P P equals to C square A P P plus S square A Q Q minus 2 C S A P Q. Similarly, the diagonal entry in the qth row is given by S square A P P plus C square A Q Q plus twice of C into S into A P Q. The elements on the intersection of pth row and qth column or qth row and pth column is given by that is A dash P Q C square minus S square A P Q plus C S A P P minus A Q Q. And please here note that the last and rest of the elements we can find by the symmetry, but here please note that this element this is the op diagonal element in the pth row and qth column or qth row and pth column and we want to make them 0. So, if I make them 0, I can write 0 equals to c square minus s square a p q plus c s a p p minus a q q like this given by equation 2. Moreover, the goal at every step of Jacobi iteration is to make the op diagonal elements a dash p q and a dash q p 0. So, from this we can have phi equals to cos 2 theta c square minus s square. So, it will be uh, cos 2 theta minus twice of cos theta into sin theta that is sin 2 theta. So, this is phi. Now, from equation 1 and 2 I can write c square minus s square upon c s equals to a q q minus a p p upon a p q. So, from here I can write phi equals to instead of this I can write this term. So, a q q minus a p p upon twice of a p q. So, this is equals to cot of 2 theta. So, 10 of 2 theta will become this value uh, 2 i s a p q upon a q q minus a p p and theta will become 1 by 2 into 10 inverse 2 i s a p q upon in the den denominator we will be having a q q minus a p p. However, a less round of error is generated if we use 10 theta in computations like let us assume t equals to 10 theta which is sin theta upon cos theta. So, from equation 1 that is my equation 1. So, if I divide the numerator and denominator by c square, so it will become 1 minus s square upon c square upon twice of s upon c. So, 1 minus t square upon 2 t because s upon c is t and this gives a quadratic equation t square plus 2 t phi minus 1 equals to 0. The roots of this quadratic equation is given by minus phi plus minus square root of phi square plus 1 and that will be sigma of phi upon absolute value of phi plus square root of phi square plus 1. Here sigma of phi is 1 when phi is non-negative and it is minus 1 when phi is a negative number. Thus, once we get t we can calculate c and s by this formula c will be 1 upon a square root of t square plus 1 and s will be c times t. Let us take an example of this method. Consider the matrix this. So, this is a 3 by 3 matrix having elements 1 square root 2 2 root 2 3 root 2 2 root 2 1 and let us solve this matrix or let us apply. So, let us take a 3 by 3 matrix and find out the Eigen value of this matrix as well as Eigen vector using Jacobi method. 
so matrix is 1 square root 2 2 square root 2 3 square root 2 2 root 2 and finally 1. So, it is a real symmetric matrix. Now, first of all in Jacobi method we will look for the off diagonal element having the maximum absolute value because we will perform a similarity transformation to make it 0. So, if I look at the off diagonal elements the biggest off diagonal elements is this one that is a 3 1 equals to a 1 3 equals to 2. It means my p is 1 q is 3. So, it means a p p is 1 a q q is 1 and a p q equals to a q p equals to 2. So, here if I calculate theta, theta will be 1 by 2 tan inverse twice of a p q upon a q q minus a p p and it is coming out. Pi by 4 because here it will be 0 in the de, uh, new, uh, denominator. So, 10 inverse infinity and so it will be pi by 2 into 1 by 2 it will become pi by 4. This is one of the way of calculating theta. We can calculate it using the t that quadratic equation first by calculating phi then t and from t we will directly calculate cos theta and sin theta as I told you. Basically that is more uh, accurate compared to this one. Now, so define matrix J. So, J will be cos pi by 4 that is 1 by root 2 0 that is cos pi by 4 minus sin pi by 4 sin pi by 4 and cos pi by 4. This is j 1. Calculate a 1 that is j 1 transpose a into j 1 and it comes out 3 2 0 2 3 0 and finally, 0 0 minus 1. So, please compare a and a 1. Just see these two elements. I have made these two elements 0 okay, just by applying this Jacobi rotation. Now, to make this particular matrix as a diagonal matrix what I need to do? I need to perform make these two elements are also 0. So, for making these two elements 0 again I will do that. So, my p is 1 and q is 2 and a 1 2 equals to a 2 1 equals to 2 that is a p q equals to a q p equals to 2 
a p p equals to a q q equals to 3 these two diagonal elements again if I calculate theta theta again will be 1 by 2 into 10 inverse uh, twice of a p q that is 4 upon 0. So, it is coming again pi by 4 and my next matrix will become j 2. So, j 2 will become 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 0 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 0 0 0 1. If I apply again this particular similarity transformation on A 1, the matrix obtained in this one, I got the matrix A 3, A 3 will be 5, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, minus 1. So, please look at A 3, A 3 is a diagonal matrix and hence the Eigen value of A 3 is 5, 1, minus 1 and so these are the Eigen values of A because I obtained A 3 just by applying the two similarity transformations on A. Now, the Eigen vector of this matrix A is given by the product of J 1 into J 2 and I will tell you why I am writing. So, Eigen vectors will be columns of this matrix that is J 1 into J 2. So, I got the Eigen value, I got the Eigen vectors and hence I will be able to solve this particular problem for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors using Jacobi method. Now, actually what is happening? Let me tell you few things about this method. Let me write a 2 here, which I obtained just by applying J 1 transpose J 1 on A. So, it was something like 3, 2, 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. So, from here I came here and from here I came here. Now, if you remember previous lecture, there we talk about gers gerin theorem. So, let us see how eigenvalues are changing or gers gerin circles are changing in different iterations of Jacobi method. So, if I talk about this, in this uh, first disk is having center at 1 and radius is 2 plus root 2. So, something 3.4, so 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So, this will be the disk from the first row. From the second row, center at 3 and radius is 2 times root 2. So, it will be something radius at 3. So, 1, 2, 3 and center at 2 times root 2. So, something 2.8. So, 2 into 3 plus 1. It will be like this. And the third row is again center at 1. Radius is 2 plus root 2. That will be just your first disk. And as I told you eigenvalues are 5, 1, minus 1. So, one of the eigenvalue will be here at 5, one will be here 1, another one at minus 1. 
So, Gers Goren theorem holds for this matrix. However, here what I am having one of the eigenvalue is the common area of two disk. The Gers Goren disk are not disjoint here. If I see in this matrix, so let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So, first is lambda minus 3, so center at 3 and radius is 2. So, this one, so 1, 3, 4, 5. Second is giving center at 3, radius 2, which is similar to first one, and the third one is having at center at minus 1, and radius is 0. So, in the second matrix, which I got in the first iteration of Jacobi method, what is having? The two discards are overlapping each other, and one is disjoint. Now, see the third matrix that is A 3. Here simply I am having one of the Eigen value is here at 5, another one at 1 and the third one at minus 1 and these are the Gers Gorian disk for the given problem. So, basically what I am doing by applying the Jacobi rotations to the given matrix, I am reducing the size of Gers Gorian disk in such a way they become disjoint or they shrunk to a single point that is your diagonal matrix we are getting here. Another thing I want to tell you here why I am saying that the product of J1, J2 like that will give me the Eigen vectors. What is happening? Let us say A1 is the Eigen value uh, matrix which is having diagonal entries as the Eigen value and this I am getting just by applying a Jacobi rotation on J. Now, as you know that J is an orthogonal matrix, it is a rotation matrix. So, J transpose will be equals to J inverse. So, what happened? if I multiply both sides, so it will become I can write like this or this is identity. So, A into let us say x 1, x 2, x n are the Eigen vectors of A and as I told you they will be the columns of matrix J. So, I have written like x 1 is the first column of J, x 2 is the second column of J, x n is the third column of J. Now, look here what are these? A 1 is a diagonal matrix having the Eigen values of A. So, it will be something lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n this matrix into again j. So, j is x 1, x 2, x n. So, when I multiply this with first column what I will get a x 1 equals to lambda 1 x 1 which is the first Eigen value and corresponding Eigen vector for a from do A x 2 will be lambda 2 x 2, A x n will become lambda n x n. So, hence this matrix J is having Eigen vectors of A as its column, which I claimed earlier that you can see from here. So, in this lecture we have learned a method for calculating Eigen values and Eigen vectors just by using the similarity transformations or a sequence of a series of transformations and those transformations are formed just using the rotation matrices in such a way that the of the diagonal elements become 0. 
In the next lecture, we will learn another method for finding the largest eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector for a given matrix and that particular method is called power method. So, thank you very much for this lecture, bye see you in the next lecture.